joined today by Mike Kirby, chairman of Green Street Advisors. Mike, earlier you mentioned the potential to capitalize on some distressed opportunities. What kind of time frame do you think we're talking about here? Is this something that REITs can take advantage of immediately, or are we looking at a few years down the road? Well, there's, there's no hurry to start taking advantage of the opportunities because the opportunities aren't plentiful, nor are they all that lucrative just yet. Um, however, if you look out two, three, four, even five years into the future, it's almost certain that the real estate world is going to be a world full of distress. And the reason I say that is because we have an incredible amount of mortgages that were originated near the, at or near the market peak that are very problematic. The, the amount of the loan is typically at or above the value of the property. So there's no trigger for default today on most of these. Some, if the property's performing poorly, that, that's a trigger. But the trigger for default doesn't really occur until the mortgage matures. And those mortgages begin to mature in 10, 11, 12. I, I assume it's a real pig and a snake. And, and I assume that the banks are going to extend some of those. The special servicers and the CMBS side are, have an incentive to extend. Um, so I think you'll probably stretch these problems out into, instead of 10, 11, 12, it might be 11, 12, 13. But you're not going to solve these problems by extending them. So at some point, the piper needs to be paid. And so when these things come up, somebody's got to come in and write a check for 40 cents on the dollar of every mortgage that's out there to re-equitize this real estate. When you add this all together, you're looking at, at broken mortgages that, that are so broken that they cause the real estate industry, not REITs, the real estate industry as a whole, to be in need of well over a hundred billion dollars of equity capital, probably a multiple of that. Uh, it's a little hard to quantify exactly, but you're looking at, uh, at an incredible amount of necessary equity. And when you look at the other sources of equity, you're talking about pension funds. Well, they don't, they've redlined real estate for the time being, and they probably will for a few years. Uh, private equity uh, opportunity funds, they have a little bit still to spend, but their ability to raise new money is almost non-existent. So they won't be big players at the table. The traditional sources of equity capital are largely dried up with one exception, and that's the public market. And we have a hundred, two hundred billion dollar hole in the commercial real estate industry in the form of a lack of equity. And we have one source that can fill it. And so it's actually very exciting for REITs. It's, it's, a, it's a heck of an opportunity because what you're going to see is that the price of real estate is, as always, is dependent on the cost of capital of the primary source that's able to finance the real estate. So it'll be the cost of capital for REITs that drives the bus in terms of how real estate is priced. If REITs do have these advantages over private industry players, how do you think the REIT market will look in the next five to ten years? The industry is much bigger five years from now. I think the big companies have doubled, tripled in size. I think there's some good medium-sized companies that have doubled, tripled in size. I think there may be a few REITs at the margin today that will go away. Um, some of the REITs today have 90% leverage ratios, and I just can't for the life of me imagine how you survive that. So we'll see a few of those go away. We'll see a few REITs merge away. I don't expect that to be a large amount of activity. There's no, there's no overriding, compelling theme there that suggests this has to happen, nor does it have to happen now, because that, that school of thought has pervaded this industry for 20 years, and it just really hasn't happened in a big way, and I don't expect things to change now. I think the other new, new dynamic is we're going to see a lot of IPO activity. Uh, the, the, an awful lot of these REITs that went private two and three years ago are owned by owners that need to liquidate their investment at some point. And a lot of those will come back. There'll also be a lot of new REITs formed by smart people seeing that, gee, real estate is priced more richly in the public market than the private market. I'll go assemble some private, privately held real estate, sell it to the public market, get a, a modest premium for doing so, and attach a smart manager to it. We saw this back in the early 90s. We're going to see it again. There's going to be an, a, a, a substantial, I think, amount of IPO activity. So I think the industry will look a lot different. There's certainly some smart people out there who, who say we are going to have 25 or 30 REITs uh, 
five years from now? I disagree. I think we're going to have more REITs five years from now than we do today. Great. Thank you, Mike. For more information on this and other REIT Week 2009 topics, check out REIT.com.